Hi everyone, this is Vincent from the Pastel Network. Um, just gonna give a couple more minutes for people to join and then we're going to start the Twitter space. Hey guys, everyone, Matt here from Blues. Looking forward to do this guy. Let's wait a few more minutes for other. All right, I think we should uh, begin and I think people will just roll in as uh, our Twitter space continues on. Uh, so my name is Vincent, as I mentioned earlier, I am the business development lead at Pastel Network. Um, just to give a quick introduction as to what Pastel is, um, Pastel is a layer one blockchain uh, that's basically serving uh, or building for NFT infrastructure. And so we have two very powerful protocols and services that, you know, other uh, dApps can build and leverage off of, which is Sense and Cascade. Sense being our near NFT duplicate detection protocol and Cascade is our um, decentralized permanent storage solution. And today we have uh, Matt from Blues, uh, the uh, NFT marketplace uh, built on ASTAR. So if you can give a quick introduction as to you know who you are and how you got involved with the, the project and <laughs> your role within it, and ultimately you know how you even entered the Web3 ecosystem. Yeah, sure. Thank you for your work. Uh, so, hey, I'm Matt, uh, and I'm core member of Blues and also other author based projects, uh, where I'm mainly responsible for creating and reviewing content, managing socials, and also for the biz dev work. Uh, I'm based in Central Europe, and uh, I started my first steps into Astar starting from the auction days. I joined Discord where I was helping like users with staking and other things regarding using Astar. And uh, one of the course Toga told me about the project. So I jumped in and it's like more than a year. Uh, about Blues, Blues is a new NFT marketplace built on Astar network. Uh, we we are ongoing right now for a month. Uh, we are trying to offer a unique and exciting platform for creators, uh, collectors, and investors in the digital art space. Uh, so as the world uh, becomes increasingly di digitized, more and more individuals are looking to invest in digital assets, and Blues provides a secure and user-friendly space to do just do that. And uh, Blues is being developed by a group of passionate developers and enthusiasts who had like, already made significant contributions to the Astar ecosystem as I mentioned earlier. And also I want to mention just uh, for maybe for the Japanese community that like uh, uh, Blues aims to be like uh, opening gateway for major Japanese com corporations to enter the world of decentralized applications and uh, blockchain technology by providing secure and user-friendly platform. Uh, so uh, that's why also, we are building on ASTAR since uh, they're like uh, doing pretty good job uh, in this kind of thing. So, yeah, that's for stuff. Yeah, that's awesome to hear that, you know, you got introduced to this through um, Togo, which is from ASTAR. Um, Togo has actually been a very, you know, helpful uh, person within the space, uh, introducing us as well to many different uh, projects that he believes that, you know, we can provide additional support to. So. It's really good to see, like, you know, the thriving community within ASTAR and their collaborative, you know, uh, enthusiasm uh, is also very critical into helping ultimately growing, growing the ecosystem. And so I think one of the major questions that a lot of people always have is that, you know, there's a lot of marketplaces out there right now, you know, like Rarible, OpenSea, you know, uh, Magic Eden, and the name, like the list basically goes on and on. <clears throat> and... I'm just curious to know, like, what made you guys to decide on building, you know, another marketplace and what makes you, you know, stand out from the rest, as well as why choosing to build on the ASTAR platform specifically? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, that's right. Like, uh, Toka is a really good guy. And, uh, like, a few of us, uh, like, from ASTAR and ASTAR-based projects, we are kind of, you know, uh, really... Uh, in deep connections so we're all helping each other and it's moving much faster when you have like these kind of connections in the network and beyond so the grow is like st pretty like slowly but steady and yeah we are just glad to be here uh, for the for this question 
uh, blues uh, kind of was inspired by the grow again the second wave of growing popularity of NFTs and also the need for a secure and uh, user friendly platform that supports uh, ASTAR network. Uh, so we decided to build on ASTAR due to its uh, high scalability and uh, ma mainly low gas fees. So this making in an ideal platform for NFT trading. So basically ASTAR is an efficient and cost effective platform that can handle a high volume of transactions, which is crucial for, for any, any of trading. And of, uh, yeah. And what about like, what, what differentiates us, uh, between like other, uh, NFT marketplaces? I think, uh, there are like few points that I want to a little bit like, uh, Showcase here, uh, our uh, our blues will be supporting XVM, uh, which enables users to harness the benefits of both uh, EVM and WebAssembly for greater flexibility and convenience. XVM allows users also uh, to develop smart contracts in multiple languages and use them interchangeably. Uh, basically, uh, in short words, technically speaking, XVM is a custom palette that allows a smart contract and virtual machine uh, to kind of talk with each other without being on the same habitat. So basically, that means you can access other CVM chains on the whole ecosystem. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, one point. Second because we value user security, we intend to use uh, the pastels, uh, sense, uh, the duplicate NFT detection. Uh, so basically that's our like second, second cause because uh, the security of our users is our like, mm, we are really uh, have this in higher priority. So that's why we choose you guys and we are glad to uh, have you on board pretty soon, I think. And uh, for third, uh, Blues, to, Blues plans to facilitate uh, multi-asset payments and cross-chain NFT purchases to streamline the process for users to conduct uh, NFT purchases without like complicated token swapping and cross-chain procedures. So uh, Blues intends to use Aster's advanced technology to enable cross-chain transactions and allow users to purchase NFTs using different types of crypt cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Uh, right now we are talking again uh, also with project, uh, which enabling also uh, paying fees in whatever currency you want. So uh, yeah, that's uh, our like three, uh, three kind of edges that we want to use uh, in this like, you know, uh, against like competitors. Yeah, I think some of the points you mentioned earlier are very critical. Um, I think when it comes to like adoption and using, you know, um, crypto and, and participating in the NFT ecosystem, uh, making sure that, you know, you have low gas fees <laughs> is, is one of the, the biggest barriers. I think a lot of people um, when, you know, Ethereum went from proof of work to proof of stake, they assumed that, you know, gas fees was going to be significantly lower. Um, but as we all know, uh, after yeah. many months, this is very much not the case. <laughs> In fact, uh, yeah, right, still right now very, it's very super high. crazy. Yeah, still yeah, very yeah, super yeah. high. And so it, it also detracts from people from wanting to purchase NFTs because like they think, oh, okay, I can buy this NFT for, you know, $100 worth of Ethereum. But then when they go to, and make that transaction, they're like, oh, wait, why is the gas fees almost just as much? And, and it, it prevents them from, you know, entering into this ecosystem yeah. and participating and ultimately supporting the artists that, you know, they really love at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Think, exactly. Uh, that's, that's good go point ahead. because like right now, uh, uh, only in even minting, like, you know, you got like $15 mint and 10, $10 are like the fees. So that's, <laughs> that's not like viable. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And also, like the, the the amount of support that you're giving towards people, um, creating like building on you know utilizing utilizing the different like uh, uh, like for example assembly and like things like that. Having that kind of diverse amount of support is also very critical because you know some people are just more comfortable with certain types of like uh, environments and things of that nature. So having all of that in encompassing as well as you know leveraging um, the sensing cascade technology uh, into your platform eventually. 
um, once you know you're a little bit further down the development road, uh, that also adds a lot of value to um, your users and creators. And just to give everybody like a little bit more detail about Sense and Cascade, <laughs> essentially for Sense, um, it's basically a, 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 like a duplicate detection protocol um, that leverages uh, computer vision and AI to determine um, the relative rareness of any image that's being uh, minted. And so right now we've actually done a demo comparing our technology against what uh, OpenSea has. And unfortunately, OpenSea is, well, maybe fortunately for us, but also unfortunate for people utilizing OpenSea is that their technology is very, very um, easy to bypass. So in the case where we took a board ape and made minor changes to it, um, we were actually able to successfully mint five out of the seven uh, board apes that we made changes to <laughs> on, their, on their marketplace and actually list them to be sold. And so thinking from like a both creator and a collector perspective, that's pretty scary in, in some sense for the creator knowing that, you know, your artwork can be easily just taken and, and just duplicated like that, made minor changes and somebody can claim it as their own new NFT and trying to sell um, utilizing your essentially in a intellectual property. And for create, uh, collectors, like if somebody who just got into the space and isn't necessarily the most, you know, well-versed in, in the NFT ecosystem, they might see a, an NFT that they, they think it's authentic, but really it's just a stolen image and somebody had just simply reminted it um, just to make a quick, uh, you know, quick buck, essentially. So it's really good that you guys are also, you know, thinking a lot about um, your, your creators and collectors for, for the long run and making sure that, you know, they have that level of protection um, to basically have that confidence to be interacting with uh, your ecosystem. And... Um, also going on to the point of elaborating a bit more on Cascade, Cascade is a decentralized permanent storage solution. Um, and I think a lot of people at this current moment, some may be aware, some might not be, that a lot of NFTs are stored on IPFS or sometimes even on AWS, uh, a centralized uh, storage provider. And the issue with, you know, storing on a centralized service provider is that sometimes there's service disruptions and um, you don't want to be in the case where like one day you wake up and you look at your NFT and you're like, hey, where did the artwork go? Or maybe you're actually displaying the NFT on, on a display that you have at home. And one morning you, you look at it and it's like, it's just 404 error. And um, those kind of things become like very uh, unappealing in terms of a user experience. And so we really think it's super critical to have that kind of decentralized permanent storage solution where um, when artists create a, a piece of art, uh, <laughs> it's going to be stored permanently on chain. And that you know, it can always be referenced to um, no matter how many years down the line. Yeah, that is so true. Like, <clears throat> well, we are like kind of, um, as, as an user also uh, got these problems with, you know, uh, detection of, of the fake NFTs and also uh, listing of like, you know, fake uh, <coughs> contract address of, uh, of the other uh, collections, which is like, you know, it's it's sometimes it's hard to catch like the the correct one and sometimes you know if you if you can like actually buy it, the fake one and you like you just don't know even because a lot of lot of users are not that experienced that they will be looking for for the right contract address you know in block scout or whatever so uh, i am personally really glad that uh, we we connected and uh, we will be able to able to co collaborate and uh, actually like integrate the pastel. Yeah, hundred percent. At the end of the day, you know, ultimately, Pastel's mission is to protect all users um, in the NFT ecosystem. Um, at the end, of, like, in order for adoption to to grow at a rapid pace, people need to feel safe interacting with that ecosystem and and having that level of trust, knowing that okay. I'm going to, I mean, anytime I'm, you know, participating in the NFT ecosystem or even in the blockchain space, I have this level of uh, protection that, you know, it's, it's not something that I'm going to be engaging with like fraudulent activity. Because uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, everybody has worked hard for their money. And so, you know, they want to spend it and have that value, you know, held in some type of way. Um, I think, you know, expanding on that, um, what do you think are some of the most significant hurdles in the NFT ecosystem that, you know, kind of remains unaddressed, uh, whether it's on the technology side or like growing awareness, education, things like that. 
Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly my words. Uh, for me, it's like about two sides. Uh, the first side I would mention is like NFT mass adoption, and uh, the second will be like increasing utility NFTs. So basically about uh, the mass adoption, uh, we all know that uh, NFT ecosystem has soared to really great heights, uh, captivating the imaginations of artists, collectors, uh, and kind of enthusiasts worldwide. However, uh, for NFTs to truly flourish, uh, they need to trust in their niche status and achieve mass adoption. So this ambitious goal faces, uh, I, I would say, a couple of noteworthy hurdles. Uh, as you mentioned it, education and awareness. Uh, so, like, you know, it's kind of when you imagine stepping into a bustling art gallery filled with vibrant NFT masterpieces, each telling a unique story. Uh, now transport that experience into the digital realm where the sheer vastness of the NFT marketplace can be overwhelming, for especially for newcomers. Uh, for NFTs to gain widespread adoption, education, and awareness, campaigns are paramount. These, uh, kind of, these efforts should demystify the concept, enlighten potential users about the possibilities, and showcase the value uh, that NFTs hold. You know, by unraveling the intricacies of NFTs and showcasing real-world success stories, more people can embrace this uh, exciting ecosystem. Uh, the second thing I think uh, uh, we need like user-friendly onboarding. So the path to NFT ownership can feel like uh, traversing uncharted terrain especially for those who are unfamiliar with cryptocurrency wallets and tech blockchain technology at all, uh, simplifying this onboarding process and creating like intuitive platforms and vital to unlocking mass adoption. Uh, I would picture like seamless user experience where anyone, regardless of technical expertise, can effortlessly create, purchase and manage NFTs. Enchantments in wallet technology, such as like, I don't know, streamline interfaces and robust uh, security measures will foster confidence and encourage uh, wider participation uh, by removing like these barriers and making NFTs more, more accessible, I would say. Yeah. And for the increase, like increase the utility NFTs, I think uh, we should mention some kind of like membership benefits uh nfts that can extend beyond being like mere digital collectibles by offering membership benefits imagine acquiring an nft that grants exclusive access to behind the scenes content early ticket sales or even personalized experiences with artists uh, by infusing nfts with membership privileges creators can foster stronger connections with their communities and reward dedicated supporters. This expands uh, the allure of uh, NFT ownership, transforming into a gateway to unique and enriching experiences. And last, last thing, I think the uh, interoperability and integration. So NFTs hold tremendous potential as bridges between various digital platforms. So integrating NFTs into gaming ecosystem, virtual worlds, and social media platforms can open new avenues for creators to monetize their work and for users to enjoy immersive experiences. NFTs could serve as uh, like in-game assets, uh, granting special powers or allowing the, for personalized experiences. Uh, so by fostering interoperability and seamless integration, NFTs can become vibrant connectors in digital landscape, enchanting, uh, enchanting their value and utility. Uh, so basically overcoming these hurdles and fostering mass adoption while increasing the utility of NFTs uh, so the ecosystem can truly really thrive. So yeah, that's, that's what I think <laughs> right now. And uh, I can see already uh, ma many projects that they are like trying to connect a real use case and uh, brand new you know, possibilities with metaverse and et cetera. Also, like big companies, like I don't know, Rolex uh, got using the like DIDs and NFTs uh, to showcase and to kind of uh, you know step up in this uh, kind of unknown world to uh, to casual or normal people right now. So yeah, I'm looking forward to to take the next step.
Yeah, hundred percent agree with you on a lot of those points. I think one of the the biggest hurdles to some extent right now is the onboarding process. Um, I think even with some of my friends and <laughs> that I have who are somewhat technically savvy, uh, even for them, they feel intimidated. So for, for the average user who's not necessarily, you know, the most tech savvy, um, seeing all those hexadecimal wallet address and, and things like that, um, it can be very, very like intimidating for, for somebody to engage um, with this ecosystem. And I think ultimately um, for, for the onboarding process, it needs to kind of feel sort of web two-ish in, so, in some sense, but the back end technology is more like the web three uh, powering that. And, and, and through that means it, it's gonna allow people to feel a lot more comfortable um, you know, onboarding and, and utilizing the technology um, ultimately. And I think some of the other points where you talked about interoperability is really critical too. I think one of the, the points that you made earlier of how uh, you guys are, <coughs> sorry, looking to allow users to pay um, gas fees through like other currencies. Uh, that's also a very interesting feature that I, I, I don't think a lot of other marketplaces have incorporated at all. Um, Cause sometimes like maybe you have like not enough ETH just to like, you know, pay the gas fee, but you might have like other currencies uh, sitting in your wallet that, you're, you're willing to utilize right now in order to, to create the mint, like to mint or to, to purchase or, or things of that nature. So I think that's a really, you know, interesting uh, feature that I'd love, I'd love to see uh, come into play more, you know, more in, in this ecosystem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. Like even like we, we will be staying in a star, I think at least for, for this year, but yeah, we, we are like, you know, our final goal is to go multi-chain, but we want to first like uh, build something really special and uh, kind of focus more on A-Star and the Japanese market. But these kind of features can uh, can attract, I think, a lot of users because uh, I really don't know if some even some marketplaces got this option. And it's really uh, convenient because, you know, ex as you said, you can have like some, you know, small amounts of, I don't know, like currencies do, you don't use anymore. So you can use them, you know, uh, this system we, I saw, uh, the other day, it's like not complete, but it will be like in <clears throat> Q3 and this even like show your currencies that they are available to pay and the best, uh, best uh, mar mar like margin or course of this. So you can even choose your best option uh, oh, wow. from, from that. So it's really, it, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely going to be an interesting feature. And I, I, I don't know, maybe you guys might be the trailblazer in, in that field. Like once you guys launch it, then we're probably going to see a lot of other marketplaces uh, look, look to build that feature within their own marketplace as well. So it's really good that you guys, you know, are exploring I love that, you know, you guys are exploring all sorts of technologies and, and different features to basically give so much value to, to the users in your ecosystem. Yeah, we, we are trying to be like more uh, community driven marketplace uh, in sense of that we are really like um, uh, listening to the community uh, because we got some, you know, goals on short term and whatever. But uh, a lot of users just came to us or artists, collectors, and yeah, we want to we want to have like, you know, possibility to issue our NFTs or uh, our art on A star and we want to do like through through blues. So we just like speeded up the process of launchpad, which was like more for Q4 or end of Q3. So we are we are choosing this approach instead of uh, like building something that uh you know, it's common for, for normal marketplaces, but we want to grow with the community and yeah, focus on that. Mm -hmm. I think um, another point that I do want to ask is that um, in, in the news recently, there's a lot of increased scrutiny from, you know, the U.S. regulatory bodies regarding, you know, cryptocurrencies and, and things of that nature and blockchain technology. Do you think this will have like a overall large impact on the NFT activity? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. But, but like with the recent uh, surge in uh, popularity of of cryptocurrencies and NFTs, it's like it's like not surprising that regulatory bodies, particularly in the U U.S., are paying increased attention to these uh, digital assets. 
While it is true that NFTs are often to see more as a form or form of a digital collectible or commodity rather than a security. So the regulatory landscape surrounding these innovative assets is, I think, still evolving. We will see like the scrutiny from US regulatory bodies such as the, you know, SEC primarily focus on ensuring investors protection and preventing fraudulent activities within the crypto space. However, when it comes to NFTs, the situation is uh, is somewhat like different. NFTs represent unique digital assets that can, you know, range from artwork and music to virtual real estate and virtual goods in video games. So, unlike cryptocurrencies, which often uh, function as a medium of exchange, NFTs are typically bought and sold as collectibles or unique items on blockchain platforms. So, they deliver their Uh, their value from their scarcity, uniqueness, and demand from collectors or enthusiasts. Uh, while NFTs may not inherently qualify as securities, uh, it is important uh, to know that uh, like, uh, the regulatory bodies may still intervene uh, if fraudulent practices or deceptive marketing are present. So for instance, if an NFT project offer investment opportunities by promising future profits or dividends based on uh, on efforts of others, it could be like it potentially fall under the purview of uh, security regulations. So for me, the impact of increased scrutiny on NFT activity is somewhat uncertain at this point. So yeah, I would say like something like this. I'm Uh, I just like have a talk about this because um, uh, I'm not that you know aware of uh, of the legal legal side of the US. I'm like checking the daily, you know, what SEC is doing. But uh, <laughs> I'm from Central Europe, so I have to ask my friend. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, the US got like li- really big problem with uh, with this because uh, they are kind of. I know like it's about the security, you know, and this is like just my personal thing, uh, but they're like more like, uh, you know, they can use it and use it somehow that everybody will be happy, you know, but they are kind of uh, killing the crypto space in their country. So like, I'm really curious because we all know in the US and maybe like in Asia, uh, Over there are money, like most money in crypto space. So it, it can touch us for sure. But in F- NFTs, uh, I think like it's, uh, it's more likely that it will be like not, not touched directly uh, on this uh, like kind of NFT space. Maybe of some projects, but yeah, we will see. Yeah, that's a very fair point, I think, that you make. I think, yeah, if anything, it would be more of an indirect uh, impact where, you know, ultimately NFTs are traded in, you know, cryptocurrencies. Um, and so if there's like a large, you know, suppression in terms of pricing and things like that, um, maybe there's a little bit more fear in the markets, which, you know, cause certain prices of <coughs> NFT projects to kind of uh, drop further. Um, but yeah, I, I think ultimately when it comes to regulatory related uh, things in the U.S., Uh, I, I hope that, you know, they take a much more, uh, you know, supportive approach in terms of that aspect, because ultimately um, a lot of U.S., the United States success in general, I think, comes from, uh, you know, the entrepreneurs in, in the technology industry. Because if you think about like, you know, all, all the, uh, the essentially GDP that's been or the value that's been created, it's, it's through large tech companies um, these past, you know, 20, 30 years, essentially. And so in order for them to kind of, you know, continue to reap the benefits of, of, you know, enjoying, uh, you know, large uh, economic growth, um, I think supporting these kind of AI industries and also as well as the blockchain industry and having uh, good regulatory frameworks uh, for everybody um, is going to be very critical for them and and for their continued success. So I think, you know, in in the short term, there's a lot of uncertainty in some sense uh, because, you know, Some of these uh, senators and things like that, they're not the most, you know, techno- technology savvy people out there. But as I think also they get more and more well-educated in, in this space, I think they're going to 
shift their opinion and, and be much more uh, supportive of this uh, ecosystem. Because ultimately, when you also see like the other global uh, players in the world in, in Asia, they're very supportive of uh, the blockchain technology. And surprisingly, even out in the Middle East, um, they're also very pro uh, blockchain. So yeah, I, I just hope to see, you know, um, better uh, regulatory frameworks coming out from the US side and hopefully, you know, supporting uh, and, and providing more support towards uh, the blockchain and NFT ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like these, uh, these kind of times are pretty exciting. I think it will, it is like battle of, you know, regulatory and also about like economy because, you know, in Asia, they are like, in, especially in Japan, they're pushing battery really hard. So I think uh, the US will be catching up. Uh, we will see what, what happened. But these kind of things uh, are, I really like. Also, I just want to mention that, you know, uh, we all know the hard bullet ledger. And it's just like also uh, times where, where like some kind of, you know, onboarding from Web2 and Web3 uh, are happening uh, with the recent update that uh, even like, you know, the users, they who wants, don't want to, you know, hold their keys in like on the paper or in, the, in their ownership they can you know rely on ledger so these kind of like uh step backs i would say to web 2 can from my perspective it can help in in these times to you know catch up and onboard more people so i'm l like really looking forward that we are like we are early you know and uh, these kind of things are like crucial to our industry. So I hope everything will be going well and uh, US will catch up and we'll be, you know, uh, really happy about it. So, yeah. Yeah, I know that was a little bit more of a serious topic, <laughs> but so we'll shift yeah. gears a little bit um, and talk more about like um, the, where we see, you know, uh, NFTs trending towards because as we all know, you know, the creation of NFTs, there's been, you know, many different shifts in the NFT meta. Um, you know, initially, there's a lot of profile pictures, things like that. <laughs> and then eventually transitioned into a little bit more utility based NFTs, and then maybe some one of ones. And then ultimately, like now, I think there's a, a huge, I think, um, growth in the space of NFTs associated with physical goods. Um, and, and there's other, you know, use cases where like, I've seen uh, burnable NFTs, um, where like, you're basically Mute, like forging a new NFT with uh, uh, several NFTs together. Um, and then uh, there's also been like open edition NFTs, which have been rel relatively popular as well. And I, I was just curious to know, like, where do you guys see, you know, the NFT space headed into, you know, the coming months or maybe in, in like the near future? And I, I did know that, you know, you did mention of like the importance of utility and things like that um, earlier on. So yeah, just curious to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think like we are on pretty same same wave here, but uh, for from our side, I think in the coming months we anticipate that the NFT space will continue to evolve and expand in several ways. We are glad that uh, we are on A star since uh, it's really pushing in Japanese, where the art is uh, uh, really uh, really like really growing at these times. So one prominent trend we foresee is the increased integration of utility features into NFTs. While NFTs initially gained popularity as collectibles and digital assets, we expect to see more NFT projects incorporating uh, functionality and interactive elements. So these utility-based NFTs can provide their owners with unique benefits, such as access to exclusive content, virtual experiences, or even real-world perks, as I mentioned earlier. Furthermore, uh, we anticipate a growing connection between the NFT ownership and be uh, membership benefits tied to, to the physical world. So NFT projects may explore partnership with real world entities such as brands, events or organizations to offer additional advantages to their NFT holders. So this could be like some kind of VIP access to events, discounts uh, on product services, uh, or other exclusive privileges. So by bridging the gap between the digital and physical realms, 
NFTs can enhance the overall value proposition for collectors and enthusiasts. And additionally, the concept of uh, of the open edition NFTs is uh, likely to gain further popularity in the coming months. Unlike like, limited edition NFTs that have a fixed supply, open edition NFTs can be continually minted and purchased by anyone interested. So this model allows for greater accessibility and broader participation within the NFT space. Uh, open edition NFTs can be used uh, for various purposes, such as, uh, again, like membership passes, ongoing subscriptions, or even as, uh, as a means of supporting artists or creators on, uh, on, on ongoing basis. So overall, the NFT space is uh, constantly evolving and the future is full of possibilities. So, so while these are just a few predictions, I would say, it's important to know that uh, new trends, technologies, and creative use cases will continue to emerge uh, and shaping the direction of the NFT markets uh, in the months to come. Yeah, I think one of the big use cases uh, is like, at least from a, like a thinking from a you know large corporation standpoint, is like having that kind of membership, you unique access, and like if they have like uh, I don't know like some sort of unique pop up. Um, in a certain location and well, you know if you hold this nft then you can attend these kind of pop-ups i think um, that ultimately gives uh people participating in their their ecosystem specifically um, a lot of value <laughs> and you know at the end of the day people want to experience things and and you know know that the community that they're part of um is is also you know supporting them in return you know just as they have supported you know the, the organization through uh, the purchase of an NFT. Um, <laughs> in terms of physical goods, as you mentioned, um, it seems like a lot of, yeah, large corporations have been utilizing this a lot. I think of all the, I think the most prominent use case right now is Nike um, with their shoe releases and, and things of that nature. I think uh, like just seeing what Nike has been doing, a lot of other, you know, um, fashion independent fashion designers and things like that has also taken um, inspiration from that as well. <laughs> so I think uh, the most recent one that I am aware of is, uh, I believe, I don't know if you're familiar with Acronym, um, but they're like basically some streetwear uh, brand. It, and um, they've also been uh, looking into utilizing uh, Web3 technology within their uh, future, uh, basically, launches for their clothing line. Um, and another one that's also been pretty prevalent is uh, the brand Remoa. They recently launched their forged luggages um, in partnership with, uh, I think, the, the technology lab that also helps uh, Nike um, do their physical um, and NFT kind of launch uh, that goes uh, together. Yeah, like it's it's really interesting that the, even the like the giant companies will uh, at, uh, in in the, like they're joining the space, you know, with like new ideas. And uh, I would say it's like just a matter of time. Like if if I I can mention uh, from my experience right now, maybe in A Star it's like uh, an FP project called Health Free, which is like for you know for runners. And even in their application, you can already like purchase uh, some kind of discount, discounts or coupons for the real world use case. So it's like already there. Uh, we just need to, uh, you know, I, I would say more, more, more money or popularity to just pop up and uh, and to like engage uh, this space more. But with the rise of metaverse and other stuff. There's like plenty, plenty things to do, and yeah, uh, I'm just really curious what the uh, what the direction will will be will take. Yeah, I, I think um, now that you mentioned metaverse, it just came to my mind that uh, I think it's rumored at least that Apple is launching uh, some sort of VR headset in the coming future. And typically speaking, yeah, when, yeah. when Apple launches any kind of um, you know physical hardware, it typically does do pretty well. So it might be very interesting to see maybe in the near future that, you know, the rise of the metaverse is going to come back um, because maybe at the time when people are using other kind of like VR headsets, 
It wasn't as, you know, well-designed as what maybe Apple could produce, um, like Oculus. And I think uh, there's also like the Steam headset and then as well as one a long time ago from HTC, the, the Vibe or Hive or something. Um, but yeah, like if, you know, if Apple launches a, a VR headset, uh, it could really, you know, be a huge catalyst in, in the space. Yeah, yeah, I heard about this, uh, and like all the projects already, like you know, rising, uh, which are connected to metaverse, like uh, gain some percentages, even uh, if the markets are like bad. So the Apple is like one of the giants that can actually make a big difference and a big step forward for us in NFT space. Yeah, for sure. Um, I. I don't know if you have any other kind of final thoughts or comments that you like to, you know, share with the listeners, but, you know, our time is kind of, you know, coming to the end. And uh, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, you know, uh, promote anything that you'd like or, or talk about things that are kind of in the roadmap and, and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Uh, well, uh, I would say like in the short term, Uh, I can say right now uh, it's really it's already like uh, deployed and integrated in in blues, but we didn't we didn't uh, send a tweet or the post about this news, but we already uh, integrated the new standard ERC one one five five, which is uh, like uh, the differentiator because uh, no one uh, who no no NFT marketplace who is supporting A star uh, does uh, have this uh, feature. In sales, so we are the first who has already like ERC 115 st- standard. So, additionally, uh, the launch of the EVM launchpad will be expected to cater to the growing demand from artists and new projects looking to leverage this uh, technology. We also already send out our APIs uh, for multiple projects and ASTAR. So. Uh, you can expect some new uh, partnerships and new new ways to connect and uh, like use uh, these APIs about like floor price and about like who is holding which uh, <coughs> which NFTs uh, together. Uh, I will say like uh, no more because uh, we want to surprise. Uh, we have some su- surprise for next week. Moving into the midterm, we can accept to see the interaction of more advanced trading statistics and auction mechanisms. These features will provide users with uh, deeper insights into market trends, allowing for more informed decision making when it comes to buying and selling NFTs. Uh, the interaction of English and Dutch auction mechanisms will provide additional flexibility and options for participants, enabling to choose the most suitable auction format for their needs. Uh, for the long term, as I mentioned, uh, our goal uh, and the focus will be on expanding with the power of XVM. Uh, this expansion will bring forth a range of advanced features, including ancient sell, buy, and offer capabilities that will support PSP34 and PSP37 NFTs. So basically, uh, the WebAssembly, uh, the native Polkadot uh, standards which uh, has like, uh, I think like Paras and R0 right now. So uh, we will be able to, uh, users will be able to trade and uh, in our platform, both of these, uh, you know, uh, styles. So, and furthermore, as we spoke, the integration of multi-asset payment support will enable users to transact transact using various cryptocurrencies. So that's uh, that will be uh, aiming for the final final months of of this of this year. So uh, Blues aims to position itself as a comprehensive and cutting edge platform within the NFT ecosystem. And these advancements will not only cater to the current needs and demands of users, but also propel the platform for the future developments and uh, emerging trends in the ever-evolving NFT space. And I would also mention that uh, I think for next month, uh, we will be also also implementing the Sense from Pasco. So you can uh, look forward uh, to have the right uh, contract addresses and collection and uh, true uh, uh, NFTs from your favorite artist in uh, in Blues uh, without any any like security breach or whatever. So yeah, 
Yeah, that's awesome to hear like how many things you have on the roadmap. Um, Cause I think oftentimes these days, there's a lot of projects out there that um, have been very kind of silent on the things that they're building. So it's awesome to hear that you guys are, are continually building and, you know, regardless of what's happening in the ecosystem, um, always adding new features and, and adding value to your user base. And we're really looking forward to, you know, helping you guys implement sense into your platform and then, you know, seeing that, you know, ultimately your users and collectors are going to be create uh, protected um, from like any kind of fraudulent activity in the long run. Cause um, as, as, as we all know, like it's, it's hard for marketplaces to uh, manually catch um, <laughs> all the fraudulent activity that occurs with so many NFTs being minted, you know, every single day, 24 uh, seven, you know, 365 days a year. Uh, having this kind of automated technology um, is going to definitely catch a lot of that um, in the long run. So yeah, thank you for taking time out of your day um, to join us on this Twitter space. We're very happy to have you here. And obviously, we're very excited to uh, have our fruitful partnership uh, going forward. And so uh, we're more than happy to have you on in another Twitter space uh, some down, some, sometime down the future as well. Yeah, thank you for having us. We're really glad that we are uh, we are in in the collaboration. Uh, glad to see uh, familiar faces in this space, and I think we can definitely say that we will be meeting it uh, once more, and we will keep an eye uh, for you guys and your progress too. So thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for even uh, the listeners in the future. So we will be sending this uh, uh, Twitter space uh, further so uh, everybody can, you know, catch up on those things and uh, uh, hear the space. So thank you, guys. Uh, have a nice day or night. Yes, thank you. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Thank you for staying until the end of this YouTube video. For the Monet 1.2 Odyssey campaign, we are currently giving out rewards for the first person who can answer this question. Where was the last place we did an AMA about Monet 1.2? You can drop your answer down below or tweet at us with the question and answer at Pastel Network. Good luck!